Welcome to Talk Flicks with Boss Chicks. I'm your host, Crystal, and today we're going to be discussing from a Boss Chicks perspective what we saw in the movie American Psycho, which I really think should be renamed into American President because literally Christian Bell's character was a carbon copy of what we have going on in the White House today. I know my uh, behavior can be <laughs> erratic sometimes. The stupid bitch! American Psycho is a crime thriller, and I, I, I really like these types of movies um, because it was filmed in the late 90s, even though it was released in, in 2000, and it really just kind of captured that, that, that feeling of the 90s. Patrick, what is it? Where are you going? I've got to return some videotapes. But it centers around a wealthy New York executive named Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale, who is a psychopath with an alter ego. He's a murderer with hedonistic fantasies. This film is directed by Mary Heron, which initially I was surprised that a woman had directed this since it had such stereotypical female characters in it. I had to pause it and, and, and go to IMDb just to double check myself because uh, I was very um, surprised by that. But I think she did it with intention. Um, but this, real, this film really just put on display something that I think we all know. And if you didn't know, you're kind of figuring it out uh, now under these uh, years of, of, of Donald Trump being the president. And that is a rich white man sometimes they don't even have to be rich you know i think about the story about you know that white guy who had a shootout with the police and he's still allowed to tell the story like the police did not kill him even though when it comes to other people they fear for their lives and they're shot dead but that's a whole nother thing but these rich white men are able to get away with everything like nobody questions them you know and it's so egregious. I mean, this guy is <laughs> Christian Bell's character from the movie. He's killing women in hallways and stairways, dragging dead bodies in body bags that are leaking blood down the hallway. Um, when the security guard just kind of gives him a casual, hey, you know, how you doing? Stuffs the body in the trunk of a cab. And he's greeted by a friend who literally asks, oh, wow, where'd you get that overnight bag? Like, literally, <laughs> they're giving the benefit of the doubt every time. Like, even when stuff is weird, um, they never get questioned, you know? I mean, he's shooting people in the streets at an ATM, you know? And it's like, it reminds me of when Donald Trump said, I could shoot somebody, you know, in the middle of the street and not lose any supporters. And literally, that is one of the truest things that Donald Trump has ever said. You might call it irony, but I really call it prophecy because literally the name Donald Trump was mentioned multiple times in this movie. Is that Donald Trump's car? Is that Ivana Trump? I'm just saying, this is true. Um... But Christian Bell's character, he just kills to get to the top, like no matter what it takes, you know, and then he sees that he can get away with it. So he's like, oh, he's going to up the ante. And we literally see this same exact thing with all the stuff that we've been going through with Trump and these, these impeachments and these trials and all these people that's been in his cabinet going to jail and being indicted, like Literally, the stuff is, it's, it's this movie that was in the 2000s is completely, it's completely jaw-dropping. Like, literally, when I was watching it, my jaw was just dropped like, yo, this is happening right now. Um, so, obviously, there must have been some inspiration here. You know, I mean, this character, there's a scene where he's running around butt naked with a chainsaw down the hallway of his actual housing complex, and nobody even comes out to say, what is going on? When the police officer who's played by Willem Dafoe, uh, who I know as the Green Goblin from the 2002 Spider-Man, one of my favorites, 
Um, he plays the cop in this film, and he's asking um, Christian Bell's character all these questions, and, and Christian Bell's character is just lying and lying and just making up stuff that literally has nothing to do with this murder because, you know, Christian Bell's character ends up murdering someone and he's getting questioned about it. And it just really kind of just shows you the whole detraction and distraction uh, methodology, you know, when people like that are really called to the carpet, you know, but unfortunately this cop was not really about holding this guy to the fire, even though things he was saying was kind of off, right? But, you know, that's how these things are. They go. So, um, it was just so much stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that I was seeing really kind of reminded me of the Jeffrey Epstein documentary, you know, how he picked up his women and was making them take baths beforehand, just all this weird stuff, you know, telling about this music and different things. It was just really, really weird. Um, and I think that, um, this movie really just kind of again just prophetically showing you what was going on even though at that particular time we didn't know what was going on um i think this film one of the the, the things that i really really get from this film is its ability to just offer i feel good advice about judgment you know, like, you need to be leery of certain people, and people who have this kind of obsessive, neat freak type of, you know, mentality, you know, just be extra cautious. It's not saying that they're necessarily dangerous, but they really could be not who you think they are, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a murderer or something like that, but it may not be, you know, what you're thinking. So, Definitely do your due diligence when you're dating anybody, but especially if they have little quirky things about them, just be, you know, thorough in your investigation. That I really enjoyed about this one was the music. It was so relatable. It's like almost like they picked music that kind of told the story of what was happening in that scene. like wow that's exactly what was happening because people thought they knew this man he was an upstanding person he was you know compassionate and rich you know philanthropist type of person and this guy has heads in his freezer bodies hanging up in the closet in these little plastic bags so um that was just kind of one of the reoccurring themes you know and one of the things that we kept seeing in this film is people turning their back on this guy as he is literally about to kill them. And when I say turn them back, I mean like they're laughing and giggling, smiling, turning their back in the fact that they just feel comfortable that, you know, I don't necessarily have to look at you. I don't think you're going to do anything to me. And literally as they're smiling and laughing and drinking, their back is turned. He has staple guns and axes ready to kill them. You know, I mean, there's even a scene where he is working out like hardcore going in listening to chainsaw massacre it just exemplifies that you really just can't trust everybody you know what i mean and the, the thing is is that a lot of times we end up trusting putting the most trust in the people who literally their intention is to harm and kill us so again that whole judgment advice like just be very careful when choosing your friends choosing you know partners to date choosing business partners to work with like yes be very careful and if you're someone who has like these thoughts of murder and different things like get some help you know what i mean like this film really just kind of oozed with the visual aesthetic of the 90s like everything about it was very 90-esque i really love the really big blocky cell phones that were used the old school Cadillac limos, the music, uh, one of the scenes, um, you know, uh, Patrick, Christian Bell's character, is uh, telling these girls he's literally about to kill about the music he listens to. 
and he tells them that he loves listening to Whitney Houston. You know, he's like, oh my gosh, I love, you know, these songs. It's one of the greatest songs of all time, greatest albums of all time. And the girl literally starts laughing at him like, you listen to Whitney Houston. Like, that was just so far-fetched for her. And I'm just thinking about that, like, man, like, why is she straight up laughing in his face because he's listening to Whitney Houston? You know, all the stuff he's been listening to this app is crazy. She is, like, laughing at this Whitney Houston. And it really made, you know, me think about the reality that often Black women are not listened to you know, by people of power and influence, um, you know, luckily, we do have, you know, a lot more women of color, um, and just women in general, you know, rising up to more positions of power and influence, so hopefully those things will change, but I just was like, wow, this, this, this girl is really thinking that it is shameful that he, as a rich white man, listens to Whitney Houston you know this this movie is timeless for me just because the 90s is one of my favorite eras like literally right now because you know we're in this corona time and you know it's kind of depressing a lot of times I have literally only been listening to music from the 90s these past probably month because it was just it was a golden age of, of R&B music which is my favorite and those years were just classic so I'm just loving anything in that year. Uh, one of the things that I didn't like was the women in this movie were very stereotypical, as I've mentioned before, and they were just falling for the okie doke here, like every turn. Like, I understand, you know, a hooker, you know, she's all about getting her paper, you know, and so she's gonna be, you know, in a movie just like that. But, I mean, you know, the first time she went out with Christian Bell's character, she said she ended up in the hospital. Then he comes back around, and she's a little bit hesitant, but she goes back with him again. And I'm like, lady, please know your worth. You know, if someone puts you in a hospital once, likely they'll do it again. It's just a matter of when. So, you know, the, and then just the whole abuse of women. Like, this, this movie is pretty violence a lot of grotesque um what some people call grotesque but just very you know in your face violence particularly towards women um but we do see some men get killed and you know that was one of the reasons why i was like is this really done by women this seems like you know something that you know a man would do like the way you know people's bodies would be objectified but I think she was doing that for a point, which is, you know, sometimes you have to drive a point home by showing the complete opposite of what you're talking about. And, you know, the thing is, women, know your worth. Be careful who you date. Overall, this was a good film. Um, obviously, I like movies like this, so I was going to like it anyway. Um, but, ladies, I recommend this movie to you because Christian Bale's butt comes out several times in this film. Okay, so I highly recommend it for the ladies, even if you don't like grotesque horror and violence, you know, just kind of fast forward to the, to the, to the good parts, right? The, the, <laughs> the butt, okay? And then just bask in the ambiance, then you can turn it off. But overall, I give this film an 8 out of 10. You know, visually, it was exceptional. I loved the 90s feel that it had. Um, but some of the acting was a little bit, you know, Tyler Perry-esque, a little over the top, but I feel it still even with that kind of worked well, because, you know, as I've been telling people, horror is a sub-genre of comedy, right? Those two always kind of intermingle. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you see, some of the acting, it does kind of make you laugh because you're like, well, what is going on? This stuff is so over the top. But um, it relates so much to today's time. I mean, literally, literally, Christian Bell's character, when he realizes that he's actually crazy, he puts a mask on, like a corona-type mask, you know? And I'm just like, what is this, this mask on? It was literally kind of like, unbelievably relatable i was not expecting this film to actually be so relevant to today's time i was just watching it because i had made a list of films that i wanted to watch during this time based off of 
the uh, IB film study exams that I had graded. And I was like, oh, I should watch that movie, you know. And so I watched it and I was just blown away by some of the stuff that I saw. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. We'll be doing this a lot more. We'll be bringing more guests on the show to talk about some of these things. And also, if you've seen this movie or if you thought anything that we talked about today was interesting, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of this film, American Psycho, a.k.a. American Presidents. So thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.